All right, here's my 2001 Chevy Monte Carlo. 3800 engine. We've got a got a leak uh, on the intake. Looks like the uh, antifreeze is coming out of the bottom there. So most of the most of these 3800s have a similar problem where the EGR valve which is connected to the exhaust and then it has a metal line that comes into the intake on the, underneath the throttle body there but it's a typical problem with the 3800 is that the line gets hot and those, those seals go bad so it's the first time I had to do this Chevy's got uh, about th 300 and 15,000 miles, 312,000, something like that. So, uh, pretty lucky haven't had to do this yet. Been, uh, in general, this great uh, great engine been, uh, been serving us well here. Bought the car new in 2001, and uh, my son drives it now. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to change the intake, we're going to change some of the seals, and take the uh, intake gaskets, valve cover gaskets, so... Shouldn't be too difficult, but you know, like I said, uh, for, for 300,000 miles uh, plus on the engine, it's been pretty good. Alright, so let me get started here. Right, I'm going to start with moving the air uh, intake off the throttle body. We'll pull that out of the way. This, this one's pretty easy. I just disconnect these two clips uh, on the, uh, the air cleaner is in here and then loosen up the where it connects there to the throttle body. Okay, we move the air intake from the throttle body here it just pulls off there's no uh, I thought there was a screw on the bottom with a, a clamp that that just pulls off the throttle body here all right so now I'm gonna remove the rest of the connectors electrical connectors for the this one's for the mass airflow sensor and these guys and it looks like there's three bolts looking at the new intake manifold you can see there's three bolts holding it in so I'm gonna go ahead and then take those out there's one here and there's there's one on the other side Alright, we're gonna pull those out. This little bracket down here that we've been, I had to push it out of the way just a little more to clear the throttle body when we pull that out. There we are, throttle body's out. That's where I think she's been leaking. So you can see, oh yeah, we've got a nice little mess here. Get this all cleaned up. And that's where it gets hot right there. Because those Right there on the original intake causes it to break down and leak. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of this taken off. I'm gonna disconnect these two vacuum line here and then down there on that electrical connector on this thing off. Get some of these other hoses taken off. I'm going to pull up this vacuum connecting connection. Squeeze these two little clips in on the top. Pull that out. I need two hands to do that. Take that hose off. Alright, there's a little metal clip on the back of this. Just 
push the little screwdriver and push it right against the back here, and that'll slide straight up. Let me disconnect this connector. Get this out of the way. Alright, we took the injectors off here, these are electrical connectors. What we have to do on that is this little blue clip has to you gotta slide that up and then with that up you can press this little pin in on the side here which releases it and pulls it out of the cap. Um, we did the front, I'm gonna do the back now. Same thing back here, I'm gonna come off the same way. I'm gonna take take this guy off. Move this, get this out of the way. And clip it here. And clip it here. I'm gonna take this off. And then we're gonna take off the connections, loosen this stuff up back here. Right, we should have access to everything we need to. Alright, here's where so far it was intakes removed. Upper intake anyway, we're gonna go ahead and Got a nice little oil oil reservoir down there, deposits. <laughs> we definitely had, uh, we found where our leak was over here. We were leaking the antifreeze from exactly where we thought, right around the bottom of the intake there. Plastic intake, but I'm going to go ahead and replace this seals around the lower intake while we got to the part. So, let's see. So we took the, we popped off the fuel rail. Just got that up out of the way. Took out the bolts holding on the intake. Pulled that off. Alright, now I'm gonna get our way into the, uh, get the lower intake taken off there. Alright, now it's gonna be a matter of, I'm gonna move this bracket out of here just to get it out of the way. The bolt here, I'll take it off here. And a couple there get that out of the way because I'm going to pull off those I think I'm going to do the valve covers while I'm got this whole thing apart and then it looks like on the intake I'm going to get, get to the bolts I'm also replacing this motor mount bracket here it was cracked uh, this piece on this side so I'm going to pull this off anyway because I'm going to replace that bracket alright and then uh, yeah, then we're into it First off, I'm going to pull off that bracket. There's two torque head screws there. And get that out of the way. Then I'm going to move the exhaust and plenum them out of the way there from the uh, EGR valve. We're going to take the thermostat loose. The uh, gooseneck there with the thermostat under it. All right, we got that bracket out of the way. Got the exhaust uh, off the EX EGR valve there. Got the gooseneck off the thermostat. We took out all the bolts off the intake manifold, including the, the two hidden ones that did tell you about. One down in the oil, under the oil there, and the other one's gonna be on this side in the same place. Alright, so they're all out and it takes it takes loose. I'm gonna lift it out. Let's see if I can lift it out now. I right, need two hands to do that. Alright, I almost forgot about the two cooling elbows down there. I had replaced them once already with the aluminum ones, which was a far cry better over the original plastic ones. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to try to leave that intact and just slide the uh, manifold off to the driver's side without having to disconnect that. I might have to end up taking the alternator off, alternator off anyway because I want to change the valve cover gaskets there. But we'll see. For now, I'm just going to slide the intake out. 
decided to pull off. I gotta take off that alternator anyway. It wasn't sliding out that easy there, so I figured I'm gonna take off the three bolts to hold on the alternator. I took the tension off the belt already with the 15 millimeter wrench on the tensioner pulley to relieve the pressure, pop the belt off. And then there's three bolts on the alternator, one there, one here, one more in the back there. I'm gonna do that guy now. And then I'm gonna pull the alternator up out of the way. One less thing to worry about getting in the way when I do that valve cover gasket. Alright, like I said, I got the alternator off, so now I'm gonna pull off this. It's this tensioner assembly, but what it does, it has the coolant for some reason. GM decided to run them through here, but they got the coolant lines that come into this tensioner, and then there's two elbows that come out of the tensioner. You see one down there, and the other one's there going into the intake. So, what I'm gonna do is just I believe, if I remember right, just decided to change those elbows, like I said, but it should be, I think, a 15 here and one below it, and then one on the back side. I'm gonna take the coolant reservoir out of the way here. It's just these two bolts on top, and then the hose here to get that up out of the way and give me some room to drop that tensioner out of the way. Alright, loosen those bolts up. Put that out of the way, just loosen it enough that I can pull that elbow out there. And then, and then it's, pull the intake off. Lower one. So it definitely had some antifreeze getting through. You can tell there's a little bit of antifreeze in the oil as I when I when I pulled off the thermostat I could see there was a little gunk building up in there. It gave me a first clue there was oil or antifreeze getting in the oil. Alright, so Clean that up. Alright, I just popped off the front valve cover. Looks like we had a little, I knew there was a little leak around the, on the bottom there. Not too bad though. The gasket, uh, it's got a keyway, it was right here on the, uh, that's where that a little sh new gasket should have a keyway in the bottom of the valve there. I guess uh, all in all, it don't look too bad considering, like I said, 300,000 300, miles. Still pretty tight there. That's a good thing. Alright, so we're gonna clean that up. Get the valve cover, get to the rear one, get that cleaned up. Alright, I got the front valve cover all cleaned up and put back on. Those bolts get torqued to 88 inch pounds. We'll use just the cross pattern to do that. And the one, you know, any time of one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not a big, not a big deal. But you just cross them up. I got the pulled off the uh, rear cover. I was able to do that without taking off. I had to take off the uh, tensioner assembly with the uh, with those elbows in it. I can got new gaskets, I can replace them on those aluminum elbows, so the uh, rear cover wasn't too bad. I had to use a little tricky by this bracket here without having that, without, I didn't want to take that bracket off, I didn't have to, because you just use a swivel socket on that to get behind that, that one by the bracket. And other than that, it was pretty easy to get off and pop that straight up, so go ahead and clean that other one up, get that new gasket put on there and put it back in.
All right, we got that rear valve cover pulled off, cleaned, put back on, new gaskets, new, new grommets. Got the uh, intake uh, gasket, the old intake uh, manifold gaskets are cleaned up and off. So we're getting ready to put those uh, put the new gaskets on. We're gonna clean up the intake manifold jet, the lower one. We'll get that put in. That's the next step here. Alright, that's right now. Alright, we're gonna put the intake manifold back on. We got that all cleaned out in there. Best looks looks pretty good. Got the other head cover on. I did replace the grommets on those screws here while we were doing that. Alright, so when we pulled that intake off, what you wanna do is after you pull it out, you wanna vacuum it out. And then as we were cleaning it out, you know, we had some rags stuck in these intake ports. Uh, cleaned the rest of it down with some carb cleaner, brake parts cleaner, but I don't want to spray too much in here. You want to make sure you don't leave any gops of crap down in there. And the oil uh, uh, catches there for the lifters. Um, but I cleaned that up in there. Got the got the head all cleaned up, ready to put the gaskets on. So we got a felt pro set of gaskets, I think. These are nice uh, aftermarket metal metal gaskets. It's the uh, Felt Pro, uh, the 98014T. This is for the 2001 Chevy Monte Carlo. What I couldn't find in the box or online was what the hell comes in the kit. So I had to contact Felt Pro and say, hey, give me a packing slip or something that's in the kit. So this is what they, uh, I was able to get in touch with somebody, they sent it to me, so. That's the kit, the 89014T. That's everything that's in the kit. So there's the O-ring, little green O-ring there for the for the map map flow sensor in there. Uh, water inlet. Those are the those are the. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're the water inlet. I have to look at that. Water inlets. But basically, that's everything in there. So. You can see that, hopefully. But for the 3.8, which is what I got, 2001, we're going to use these for the ends on the gaskets. These other ones are for either a different year or for the 3.4, I'm not sure, but we don't need those. We've got the O-ring for the thermostat, fuel injector O-rings. we got these that's for the other... Uh, I think that's on this this 3.8. No, it wasn't on there when I took it off. So just the one on on the 3.8 2001. Like I said, then you get this RTV. So we'll go ahead and put some of that on there. Get those get those gaskets mounted in there. Get that intake put back in there. And I got the gaskets laid up in there. I just wanted to point out to you. You'll see this with any of these kits that you see online. But that RTV goes in the corners here, and you don't want to be you don't be afraid to use it. Get you these four corners on on each of the ends there. You don't want to be afraid to put it on because it'll lose out. And you want to. You definitely don't have a good seal there. You will have a leak. So like I said, aftermarket gaskets. Most of them uh, are coming in four pieces like this. So, all right. So let's go ahead and put that manifold dropped in there now and get it torqued up. Well, here's that lower intake. Just want to show it out. I got it. Got it cleaned up pretty good. I degreased it, threw it in some soap and water, rinsed it out, dried it off. These, whoops, I'm gonna spill my beer there. The uh, got a new new sensor on the uh, high temp sensor for the coolant, and then also we replaced. It come in the uh, upper ma uh, plenum kit for the upper intake manifold. This new EGR uh, post here, it's a little smaller diameter, it's supposed to be the, the new design, but that's the rest of this thing looks like, got it all cleaned up, so cleaned off, all these gaskets, we've got it cleaned off good with a razor and then cleaned it up with some acetone, so it'll still get nice seats on there with the new gaskets. Alright, let's get that put on the car. Alright, drop that intake in there, looks like all the holes are lining up, lining up in there, make sure they're all lined up. And obviously you got the bolts cleaned up. And one thing you want to do, make sure you get them all cleaned up, get them grease free. So when I put them in there, I'm going to 
Put them in some Loctite on them. That'll keep them keep them tight after we torque them down. So, all right. So let's get the let's get the Loctite put on. Get these put in. Obviously, you're not going to forget about the two two bolts that were hidden down in there, down in the down inside. So we're going to get those put in too and get them all torqued up. Now there's a torque pattern you want to you want to make sure you follow when you put this together. Here's uh, here's the pattern you want to follow to putting them together. You start on the inside and you work your way out. One, two, three. Obviously, follow numbers and get that get that torqued into. All right, and that's the that's the pattern you want to follow. All right, and then these get torqued for uh, for the lower intake to cylinder head. 11 foot pounds, 132 inch pounds. All right, and again, that's for the intake manifold to cylinder head. All right, let's get those put on there, get them torqued in. All right, we got that intake, lower intake, torque down. I did that in two passes, by the way. The first pass was a lower torque setting. Went around and torqued them all with the, you know, with a lower setting, and then came back with the with the the correct setting and torqued them right. And then uh, on the ends, you should have that little RTV squish out there. You might not be able to see that with the light there. Let's see if I can get a light, but you should have that. If you don't have that squish out, um, you want to make sure you do because. At least you know you had. So check all the check all four corners here where you put the RTV. Make sure it's oozing out. Um, that way, uh, you know you know you shouldn't have a problem in that in that gasket there. All right, so got the lower intake mounted. Let's get the let me get the water pipe uh, two little water pipe connections made to the tensioner assembly. Get those back in there. Get those. And I had that intake off, got that cleaned up good. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just clean these out, make sure these are real clean. If you had the plastic ports in there before, you want to make sure you get that all cleaned out. I had the, the metal ones in, I'm going to reuse them. I had replaced them once before. There's the lower one already. That was a earlier issue with the plastic ones that are a typical problem on these 3.8s. Alright, I'm going to get those, put some silicone lubricant on them, get those put together. We'll get that upper lower intake manifold plenum kind of mounted on. Alright, so next thing I'm gonna do is like I said, I'm gonna get the tensioner assembly mounted and then I'm gonna there's a bracket we took off there on the back. I'm gonna put that bracket back on and we'll get the alternator mounted. And uh, this front engine mount I had taken off, get it out of the way for the valve cover. I was also replacing that because the other one had a cracked it's another common problem in these three point eights, it cracked motor mount on the on it was on this side. I'm gonna replace that with a aftermarket one from Dormer, a steel one instead of the aluminum. Alright, so let's get that stuff done. Alright, we got the alternator mounted. We got that tensioner pulley with the hose with those uh, metal elbow brackets mounted. They go up in here. This one goes in the other goes into the intake. Put new gaskets on them. They came in one of the kits. Orange ones did anyway. Got the got the belt put back on. All right, that's fairly easy to do if you've never done. I didn't show you taking it off, but put a 15 millimeter wrench on here. You use a, a, a on the on the tensioner pulley, and then you can turn turn the wrench. Put a piece of pipe on, and they use another wrench uh, to get a little leverage. But you just you just pull on the the spring, and that releases the tension on the belt, and you can remount the belt. All right, put the bracket back on the back there on the uh, the rear. Put this this guy here. Hooked up the uh, metal in the EGR metal line from the EGR valve into the bottom of the intake. Um, so we're getting ready to put the intake on now. A couple of things on the intake. So here's the old one. Make sure you match them up. Old one was in pretty. Uh, this is where it was leaking from on the on the old one here. Definitely getting the antifreeze was coming by right here. Um, 
but make sure you match them up. Put the gaskets, put the gasket kit on that came with it. Just really just line up, press press in these little plastic uh, alignment pins there. There's there's three of them, and then uh, the this uh, pipe. Make sure you feed it in. We'll see where it feeds in right down here, and that's for the pressure sensor. Um, that's pretty much it. I got to move over. Put it put in the uh, gasket for the. Um, throttle body goes here. I gotta put in these bolts. Um, gotta put in these bolts that came with it. They came in the new kit here. I don't have to worry about taking them out of there. Let me show you the, uh, the PCB valve because it's kind of hidden on this thing. Let me, uh, let me show you first on the. Well, I put the new one on already, but the PCB valve goes in here. This comes with it, this bracket comes with it, the PCV valve and the spring come with it. Um, let me show you on the old one what it looks like just in case you never take it out and change a PCV, P PCV, uh, yeah, PCV valve. This thing just kind of twists, so it's just twisted counterclockwise. Alright, and then that pulls off. Inside is a spring. Alright, and then underneath the spring is the PVC valve in there. Let me get it. I'll pull that out. See if it comes out. I kind of had it pulled it out already. Yeah. All right, and that's what that looks like. So definitely had some oil in there. Um, one of the one of the O-rings that come with the new kit goes on the PCB valve before you put the new one in. And this plastic one here, this O-ring here, came uh, in the new kit as well. So I put that together on the new one. Uh, we're getting ready to. Like I said, mount the upper lower intake or the plenum. Um, one more part I forgot to mention here on the other side that's under this PVC valve that's in here. Uh, what goes on top is a pressure switch. All right, so when you take that off, pull that apart, inside the kit, there's the old one here, but inside the kit, uh, they give you a new, a new seal for that. So go ahead and replace it with the new one. Uh, before you go ahead and mount that in, and then that just mounts in these clips here. Now you can put a little uh, WD-40 or a little silicone on that rubber just to help slide it in, all right? Just wanted to point out when you when you screw in these these studs here, you don't need this is like a uh, like a torque uh, type screw on the end, but all you need uh, on that I think it's a three five thirty second, yeah five thirty second socket will fit right on that, and then you can. You tighten it in. You don't want to over torque it in, but you want to make it tight so it doesn't come loose. Uh, when you when you mount the throttle body back on, that'll hold everything in place, but you don't want it to back up. All right, and the only other thing is that comes with the kit. And again, this is a new uh, uh, vacuum. You know, the vacuum port hooks up. There's an O-ring that came in the kit. And then you just mount this right on the other side there where the other one was. So I'm not going to put that in until we until we put that in the car first. But that's the only other parts in the kit. And then the, uh, I think I might have mentioned this already, but this was the old um, EGR port, which actually part of causing all the problems here. But the old EGR port um, is, a, is a, you can see the diameter is fairly large. The new one, I already mounted it. Let's see if I've got uh, the other piece to it. There's comes, the kit comes with two, uh, one for one for this, which is a 3.8, uh, but as you can see, looking at the, the hose, that the, the port itself, um, you know, there's a lot more clearance in here, so it won't heat up, but this, uh, you press into the, <coughs> pull the other one out on the intake, um, and then that one gets pressed in. I, I pulled it out. If you insert, I think I used a socket on the old one, and then a pair of vice grips to pull it out, but inside the center of it here insert a socket you know something that'll fit inside that you can get a tight grip on it so it doesn't squish it um, but I put a socket in there and then use a pair of vice grips and just just pulled it out all right so that's the old one and then the new one um, you just kind of line up with the holes and then uh, what I did is I used another socket over the top actually one that fit over the, the uh, hole the whole uh, tube itself and then use that to tap it in on a block of wood a little tricky, but it's not it's not rocket science. You just got to tap it in straight. All right, so let's get this guy mounted. 
basically basically where we're at here. So let's get that mounted, get that torqued up. And we've got requirements for torquing it. I've got them handy here. Also a pattern, same as same as the other one. You want to make sure you put use a pattern when you're torquing that in. Um, depending on, on where I see this one's probably better to see, but it's basically the same cross pattern, one, two, three, you know, around. You're starting at the inside of working your way out. Uh, torque requirements for this, for the intake uh, manifold plenum to the intake, uh, right there. Hopefully you can see that. It's 7.42 foot pounds or 89 inch pounds. All right, so let's get that mounted up. All right, we've got the plenum set on top here. I just wanted to point out when you do, make sure one of the things you check is this new uh, EGR post that's in here. Make sure it's not touching the sides. Make sure you got enough clearance. You know, you can tap it one way or the other to get, try to get in the center there. But you want to get that, you know, so it's not so it's not touch center. And then we're going to go ahead and, uh, and put the screws in. There should be 9 millimeter screws. I'm going to put Loctite on them, but there's, there's three in the front, three in the back. Um, mine had... 10, 10 millimeter post nut screw on this end here for a bracket that, that supports the wire harness. Uh, and then there's another 10 millimeter on the other side with the same thing. It's a it's a stud with a nut. Goes in this one here. And that's got a, a bracket for the EGR valve, that, that, that little shield that goes around that. So you get that Loctite put on these and then get them torqued in there. You know, tighten them up slowly by hand and then and then torque them down uh, probably 42 inch pounds first, halfway, and then tighten them up to the final um, 89 inch pounds. All right, we got the plenum mounted on there. Uh, like we said earlier, when I get all the bolts installed, these guys here along the bottom, we're going to torque them. I did them halfway first. Actually, I just did them hand tight with a with a with a socket head, and then I went with a ratchet and tightened them up a little bit more all around in the sequence. And then then I did them about four foot pounds, and then up to the seven seven and a half foot pounds. All right, so that's where we're at. That's mounted. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, is to get the fuel injectors uh, cleaned. While I got to the part, I'm going to so over here. While I got to the part, I'm going to. Take the fuel ejectors off. Just got to change the O-rings. Each kit, both the uh, manifold kit that I bought uh, for the, the plenum and the uh, Felpro gasket kit, both came with the ring injector rings. So we're gonna we're gonna replace them. Um, but I'm gonna take the ejectors apart and clean them while I got them off. Get them get them clean. Get the new O-rings changed. So shouldn't be too bad. These are these are fairly simple. Once you have it off the car. Get the fuel drained out of it. All right, like I mentioned, I was gonna pop these injectors off. That already went dead on me there, but anyway, the easiest way I found to get these things off, um, not right or wrong, but see if I can do this so you can see it. But there's a, on the back side of the clip, just pop the screwdriver in here and pop that out. All right, once that clip is off, it just just pulls on from the back. And once that's um, once that's out, then you can just pull the O-ring. So, like I said, I got new O-rings in the kit. I'm going to change the O-rings. I'm just going to clean out the injectors uh, while I got them here. See, that's the uh, the two O-rings. There's a small one on this end and then a larger one on this end. If you just pinch them, you can just pinch them in there. And you can, uh, if you have a tool, you can get in here to pop it off. And then same thing on the other end. You can just just pinch it together. You can get underneath it, pop it up, and then just roll it back. So I'm going to change these O-rings. I'm going to clean them while I got them out. I got this. It's nothing, nothing fancy, but it's just a little uh, redneck uh, injector uh, energizer, if you want to call it that. Really, it's just a nine volt battery and uh, a couple of test test clips. What I, what I can do is just using the test clips, I can hook onto the probe, hook onto the lead in there. And then using a, a 9 volt battery, it's just in a, 
and a little momentary switch. No 9 volt battery. I could just activate the injector. You hear it. So I can take a little fluid. Um, no, I might as well show it to you. I just blow a little, blow a little fluid through. Make sure, spray the screen out on this side. Some carb cleaner. Fat ring goes on the, the side that goes into the rail. And the smaller ring goes on the side that goes into the intake manifold. Let's write this down while I got it here to get this little ring off. Then all I'm doing is I've got a piece of hose, putting that on. I could put a little little car cleaner in there, and I could just energize the. I'm just using the mouth and just blowing on it. So that's all I'm doing, just to just to make sure the injector's working, we're working fine before I took it off. But like I got to the part, I just wanted to check it, make sure. Basically, I wanted to just clean out the filter side. I'm not replacing. You could buy kits to re to rebuild these. You can pull out. There's a little filter in here. You could pull it out. But uh, these, uh, I'm looked in there with a with a with a little uh, eye loop and a light, and they look pretty clean. So I'm just I'm just blowing them out. So. Anyway, that's uh, that's the injector, and then you, once you've got it cleaned, you just mount it back on the spat on the rail, same way you took it off, put the clip back on. All right. One quick note: when you're putting these back together, when you uh, when you're going to push this back in there, easiest thing to do is I just put a little oil on there, a little two-in-one or WD-40 or something, just on the O-ring, just so that when you insert it, it'll it'll go in a hell of a lot easier than trying to force it in and rolling the O-ring on yourself. Once you get that, and then you can push it in. All right, got the fuel injectors cleaned up. Got them uh, put back on the rail. Got the rail remounted. Pretty easy to do. It's just the opposite of this is obviously disassembly. But uh, you know, when you line it back up, line them over the holes, push them down, seat them in, and then put the four four nuts back on. There's there's one in the two on each side. All right, so the uh, fuel injectors are back in. Fuel injector rails back on. I'm gonna hook up the fuel lines. I get the throttle body cleaned up. I should uh, take this, take this, and clean it up pretty good. This is uh, quite a bit of carbon built up on there, so we'll get that cleaned up and then get this remounted. All right, this I think, <clears throat> if I remember right, you can take this out, this uh, off the front here. Little C clip pliers, or uh, you just grab these two clips here, you squeeze them together, and you take that out, and you could take out this honeycomb and get that cleaned out and clean out good behind it. All right, let's get that cleaned up and we'll get that mounted. All right, got the throttle body cleaned up and mounted again. There's three bolts, same as when you took it off. There's one on the bottom down here, one right here, and then one on the other side down, down over this side. Just uh, get those torqued up. Make sure you got the gasket in there, obviously. Um, this bracket, you had to move it out of the way when you took it out. You took a screwdriver and you just, I don't know if I showed you, but you just took, put a screwdriver down in here and you, you move, move the bracket. You're not really bending it. You're pushing it. It's going to pivot on the screw. It's mounted down here. If that screw loosens, you can just you can get under there with an open end wrench and tighten that up. But uh, you just push that over here, put the bolt back in the side. All right, that got all cleaned up good. A lot of carbon in there. All right, so we're gonna get the fuel rail, uh, fuel lines hooked up to the fuel rail. Get the fuel injectors plugged in. Get the rest of the cable harness back together here. Get all these connectors put back in. 
Got the, the mass airflow sensor, throttle body here. So we'll get, let's get the rest of these connectors hooked up. Uh, you know, basically, you should hook everything back up, find a place for it. Um, if, you didn't, if you didn't see where it came from, you can go back and look in the video. I can't remember if I, uh, if I showed them all, but they're, they're all pretty. They, you know, they line up where they go. All right, let's get those guys mounted in there. Got that cover put back on. They got to put the cover on the EGR valve here. That took that off to get out of the way before. Let me put that back on. All right. All right, got all the electrical connectors back together. So, got the uh, fuel injectors plugged back in. Got the vacuum lines put back on for the, got the fuel hooked back up to the rail. I had disconnected the alternator. I don't know earlier if I said I was taking that off, but I took off the alternator just to get it out of the way. Uh, I did a couple other things while I was in here doing the intake manifold. Like I said, I was changed to change the valve cover gaskets. I also changed the spark plugs and the wires since I had those off, it's easy to access everything. Put new wires on. Uh, put a new motor mount. I had a cracked bracket. I put that on. Put the new one on. Mounted that. Um, let's see. Got a new thermostat. I got to put in yet. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, change the oil now, just in case any antifreeze. You know, when I pulled off the intake, any antifreeze went down in. I'm gonna change the oil. I'm gonna take it outside. And uh, I'm gonna connect it without the thermostat first. Flush out the system. Get the. Get some uh, some water running through, flush it out good, and then fill it up with antifreeze, fill it up with new oil. And then we're going to give it a whirl. Uh, looks like everything else is back together. Um, I'm going to change the air filter, put the air, put the air, uh, change the air filter, put the air intake back on. And uh, get, it, get it started up, see what, see what it sounds like. Alright, we got everything back together. Looks good, sounds good. Got the flushed out the radiator system, put the new thermostat in. <laughs> Everything else hooked up. Got a little smoke in here, but that's just a degreaser I had on the engine before I pulled it off. I gotta pull it out and get that, get that dry up. Other than that, sounds pretty good. So it looks like this one's a wrap. Everything looks good. Sounds good. All right. Hopefully uh, this is helpful to some people. Give me some comments. I'll try to answer questions for you. But uh, this is my uh, 2001 Monte Carlo 3.8. Check this out. Yep, 314,159 miles. So, she's still going. Hopefully you got another 100,000 out of her. All right, thanks for watching.